Right under across that path. Getting that exercise in. I see ya. I see ya. I see ya. Shake it. 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 I see nice. why they're playing this song. Shake it like a Polaroid picture or drop it like an airdrop photo. 2022 styles. Do you think that's what they were doing? in the? That's what they thought in the control room? Yes. Was they drop are it like that a, quick. Is that why you guys played that song? If not. Control room? Sounds really good. No, no. not at all. They just said <laughs> no. And it wasn't even a no. <laughs> and run with it. I, I'm going to quote the Kim. Yeah, I'm going to quote Kim, the director. Reluctantly? Went. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, welcome back to Breakfast Television. Morning. Yes, it's a Wednesday morning. Frank Ferragini, Tina Pugliese, Diva Brown with you. Good morning, everybody. Okay, when okay. you're a pilot, I mean, none of us are. None of us are. Uh, qualified Equipped. to fly a, should a not plane, be pilot. yes. No. Should not but there's be. a lot going on. Yes, you have a lot happening, right? So, a pilot that was taking the flight through to uh, Cabo San Lucas <laughs> in Mexico. Yeah, he recently threatened to turn the aircraft around if passengers did not stop sending him photos via oh, come on. airdrop. So there's an airdrop feature if you have an iPhone. Yes, you can send photos to everybody. But the problem was they were sending him nudes. <laughs> This is ridiculous. What? Like, I, really? Okay. Really? We have. Okay, okay we have a photo people? first. Let's see the photo first. It was just okay. It's oh just the airline. Gosh. Okay, it's a Southwest airline. That's no, the photo. No, we're gonna keep this. Okay. Close my eyes. Now a passenger posted okay. a clip right of the pilot reacting oh, to the incident. Oh, they showed them their Southwest, all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, oh. the Northwest too. Yo, okay. Yeah. Okay, the here's here's race. the video that the passenger uh, <laughs> took on the flight. What he's doing. So here's the deal. This continues while we're on the ground. I'm going to have to pull back to the gate. Everybody's going to have to get off. We're going to have to get security involved. Oh, and it's God. vacation that's going to be ruined. Good so you folks, that. whatever that airdrop thing is, quit send a naked picture. Let's get yourself to Cabo. Honestly, good for them. It's like being called to the principal's office. That's but pathetic. It had to get you, there. You can just turn your airdrop. He could have just turned it off. off. But maybe they yeah. need it on the pilots for a reason, right? No, it's just to drop files or usually just to drop photos. <laughs> Mel, yeah, my, Mel just yeah. turned off her airdrop. Man, <laughs> I was trying to send it. airdrops to everybody in the room right Diva now. Diva's going to test There's it. Mel, there you Do go. you guys ever do that? I've never, like, tried to mess up somebody's No, I've airdropped. Like, if I'm, if I'm with a group of people yeah. and you're taking photos and you want to share the photos, You'll airdrop the photos to them so it's a little bit fit, faster. Usually the quality's yeah. better as well. Did you ever accidentally no, like, add too many photos that no, you don't no, intend? No, 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 no. Okay. My photos are all like, they'll be like, oh my God, it's a <laughs> daffodil. Oh my God, it's look so at that peony. Oh my yeah. God, look yeah. at the dahlia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah. You're, no, sending, yo, you're sending oh peonies? Yeah, real peonies. Like the really, the like the, on that tulip. The ones, the ones that have a better fragrance. <laughs> no. Yes. Wow. <laughs> What about you, D? <laughs> I've done it. I won't lie. I've done it. I've done it before. Uh, damn it, Moore. We talked about him earlier. Uh, from Kiss from 92. Kiss. We did a red carpet uh, for <laughs> Tiff, and we were so bored because everything got delayed. I'm like, dude, come here. We took a selfie, and then everybody who had airdrop on, I just sent it to everyone <laughs> on the carpet. And just watching their reactions is the best because someone's like, Dink. they're like, uh, huh? Of course you did it, D. And then some people, but then a bunch of people accepted it. And we're like, oh, wait, why would you accept it? Good. Yeah. Joke's on you. Now yeah. they have those photos <laughs> yes. of you, too. I didn't mind. It was all good. Don't so, do that, everybody. Anyways, yeah, it is a fun Don't little feature, but it is a great way to share photos with everybody. And it's also a great well. way to see who's in the room. That's Yeah, that's a good way to yeah. find out. All right, it is 8.01. You're watching Breakfast Television. Time for some news with Melanie Ying. Morning. Uh, in Barrie, concerns are being raised about the safety of a construction site connected to the tragic crash that claimed the lives of six young adults. McKay Road in Barrie is closed off for construction, but locals say there's a lack of barriers in that area, so people often use it as a shortcut to get to the nearby casino. The young group was at the casino on Friday night, reported missing Saturday. Police found their bodies in a vehicle Saturday, early uh, e Sunday, I should say. A vigil is expected to happen Saturday night. The Delight Restaurant and Barbecue in Markham has been cleared to reopen today. Several people became seriously ill after going to the restaurant over the weekend. York Region Public Health say that a contaminated spice laced with aconite that was used in a chicken dish, that is believed to be responsible. Investigators found the retailer of that suspected spice of that product and have since removed it from shelves. Well, the TTC is ramping up service amid an expected surge in ridership. So starting on Sunday, 
three-minute service will return on Line 1, Young University, and Line 2, the Bloor Danforth Line. There will also be increased service on the several bus and streetcar routes. You'll find a full list on our website, toronto.citynews.ca. And the change is, of course, coming as many kids going back to work and a lot of people... No, kids are not going to work, not yet. They're going to school, and a lot of people are going back to work. All right, so it has been a very busy time for Queen's Park. We know Prime Minister Justin Trudeau visited the legislature first time since 2018 yesterday for that sit-down. And this comes as a controversial long-term care bill is expected to be passed today. And, of course, we're also keeping our eye on those uh, teachers and education worker union contracts all set to expire. Uh, our Queen's Park reporter, Cynthia Mulligan, she's been tracking it all for us. She joins us by phone today. We're just having some technical issues. Good morning to you, Sin. Good morning. Sorry, my camera on my computer isn't working to join you visually. That's okay. That's okay. It's a technology, and <laughs> unfortunately, sometimes it fails us. But let's get right to what's going on here. I want to begin, Sin, with uh, that sit-down, that closed-door meeting between uh, Ford and Trudeau. Um, Trudeau didn't, didn't talk, but, uh, but Premier, the Premier did. And, of course, we know health care was a big focus here. So what are you hearing about what happened in that room? Well, it's interesting because uh, Premier Doug Ford came out after the hour-long or so meeting, and, and it was interesting that Justin Trudeau did not come out with him because then Ford got to spin it the way he wanted to spin it. He said they're on the same page. He said that uh, they both agree that the status quo uh, is not working when it comes to health care. Well, I don't know what that means, like, then, because the Premier is suggesting that his province is going to further investigate privatizing surgeries, for example, or putting them in private clinics. Now, he says that OHIP would still cover it, but private clinics would, would provide that. So we didn't get an opportunity to ask the Prime Minister if he's okay with that and what his thoughts are. We only heard from Premier Doug Ford saying, oh yeah, we're on the same page and the status quo doesn't work. So, so we'll have to wait and see what this really means and, and what the federal response ultimately will be. We know that Premier Ford was in the Atlantic provinces last week, getting other Conservative premiers aligned on all of this as well. So I, I, I suspect many more conversations to come. Cynthia, how would you categorize their relationship? Well, I mean, it was it was quite turbulent at first, but over the past four years, they've really um, worked together. They they make a uh, concerted effort to show that they can work together. I think that they both know that that is what Canadians want, mm -hmm. and and it really worked throughout COVID. There was. There was very little infighting through COVID when you have a liberal and conservative uh, government uh, yeah. working together. So I, I think they get along well. Doug Ford has always talked about uh, his good relationship with Christian Freeland, mm -hmm. the deputy prime minister. And you have to remember, just before the provincial government, Justin Trudeau was at many uh, news conferences with Doug Ford, even called him a close friend right. uh, just before the election. So, I mean, you know, people noticed that, and it was really hard for the opposition to, to compete with that. So we've got about a minute and a half to get through a whole lot. I apologize oh, for yeah. this, but let's, let's talk about this bill that is expected to pass, controversial. You've been following it very closely. What does it yeah. really mean for communities and, and, and the most vulnerable? Well, really, Mel, it is, this is Bill 7, and it is the bill that allows hospitals to move people who are waiting, uh, who are discharged but waiting for a long-term care bed. Now, many can, can often stay in these hospital beds because there isn't the choice that they want available. So there are about 230 right now who have been there for more than six months. Studies show that that's not necessarily the best place for them, that they tend to decline because they don't get the same socialization and, and individual level of care that they do in long-term care, if you've got a good one. And we know they're under strain as well. But you have 6,000 people in alternate care taking up hospital beds, and they should really be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. 1,800 of them are, are in uh, long-term care, waiting for a long-term care bed. And I know it's such a complex, and I'm sorry to, to rush through it. So it's expected to pass today. We don't know what it means because a week after it passes or, or becomes law, then we'll get the guidelines. We'll get the regulations on how far that they, they can go. Will they be charged? Because there are fears that if they refuse to go, they could be charged up to $1,800 a day, which is the uninsured hospital rate. Although Doug Ford maintained yesterday that he doesn't want to see that happen. 
Wow, a lot to uh, a lot to so uncover much. here, Sin. Um, let, let's take a little bit more time with you next time around. We'll figure out your technical as well, but appreciate you taking the time on what will be a very busy day at Queen's Park. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mel.